G'day, my name's Adam. I'm the co-founder of Reloom. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get started with the Reloom library. So welcome aboard and let's jump in. So the first thing you'll need to do is clone the style guide. To do that, you can follow this link here or you can go up to the style guide drop down and click clone style guide. It will then take you to the starter project clonable which contains a style guide page with pre-built classes. So these classes include text classes, color classes, button classes, spacing classes, etc. It's designed to be the perfect starting point for any project using the Reloom library. Now, if you have an existing project, we do touch upon the best practices for using Reloom library on existing project. So go check out the Reloom University, where you'll find a video on that. Let's jump into this style guide and I can show you what it's all about. So what you wanna do is you wanna click clone project and click clone project again. Great, we're now on the home page of the starter project. Now before we continue, it's important that you understand that the Reloom library has been built using the client first Webflow style system created by the team at FinSuite. So we've chosen to build our components using this system as it enables you to keep your Webflow projects more organized, particularly as websites scale and grow in size. However, it also empowers you to build Webflow websites faster, which is what we're all about at Reloom. So if you haven't used Client First in a project before, or if you're new to Webflow, I recommend you go and read the documentation by FinSuite. It'll make using the Reloom library much easier and you'll be able to take full advantage of it. Now, back to the home page. You might be wondering, what can I delete here? Uh, and well, the first thing that you can delete and should delete is this whole message. So you can do that by clicking the empty space, which will open a div called RL style guide message, and you can just press delete. Okay, but what about the page wrapper, the global style symbol, and the main wrapper? Well, without going into too much detail as it's covered in FinSuite's documentation of Client First, this is how you should structure every page. Essentially having a page wrapper, which wraps the entire page, a global CSS embed, which stores additional CSS uh, styling and classes that Webflow does not cover. So things like creating ellipsis after two lines, um, removing scroll bars, Things of that nature can be found in here. So you wanna be carrying this over through throughout the project. And then lastly, you have the main wrapper. This is where all components that are not the navbar or footer should be placed. Let's go ahead and paste some components in so I can show you where to paste them so that we're crystal clear on how you should set up a page. So I'm gonna go back to the library, right? I'm going to go to um, hero, I'm gonna add a hero section. I'm gonna go copy that. I'm gonna paste this inside of the main wrapper. Then I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna get a nav bar. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna place the nav bar above the main wrapper. And then I'm gonna go back here into the library. I'm gonna to go to footers. There we are and I'm gonna copy and paste a footer below the main wrapper. So that's essentially how you structure a page. Great, so now let's go to the style guide page, which is available when you go to pages, you'll see style guide, and it is saved as a draft because we don't wanna be publishing this live, but we wanna use it as the source of truth or the source of changes to elements at a global level. These things like buttons, typography, colors, etc. So let's jump in and go through the style guide. Okay, so the style guide page is broken up into two parts. Uh, these include elements and classes. These are the pre-built global classes that are featured on every single Reloom library component. So one example would be, let's look at the margin X small class. We have determined that the margin X small class has a margin of one rem. And so 
this approach to using spacing classes is what FinSuite's client first is based around. So if you don't understand this, I'd recommend you go back and read the documentation. But essentially, we're deter we've determined that one rem is the optimal uh, spacing value for the margin X small class. So we recommend you adopting the values that we've created because these have been uh, carefully thought out based on our own experience and best principles when it comes to design. So yeah, that's why I wouldn't recommend touching any of these classes. They're pre-built, they're ready to go for you to use. However, elements you can touch and change and probably should. So let's go through the elements. Uh, and so basically the elements are split up into typography, colors, effects, and UI elements. So let's go from the start uh, with typography. Okay, if you wish to update typography at the root level across all components for that project, you want to go to the body, go over to selector, click the HTML tag for body, and go down to font. And by changing the font, you're essentially changing the font used for the entire website. So let's click Meriwether for example. Now you'll see that every single text uh, is using the Meriwether font. But I'm gonna change that back to how we had it before. Now, if you wish to change the headings at a root level, what you can do is uh, click the heading, then go over to the selector, and click the HTML tag that is purple. And essentially this is where you can make updates to uh, your, your heading. So I'm just gonna like, for instance, just change the H1 so that you can see the change that is made on the homepage. There we are, this uses a H1. Okay, back to the style guide. Now, what's the difference between HTML headings and, H and heading classes, you might ask. So you have the HTML headings in purple and the heading classes. Well, heading classes are additional text classes that you can use to add style to text. For example, if I had a normal text class and I wanted to make it uh, a heading XX large or make it feel like a, a, big, t a big heading, without it being a H1 class, then I could use the heading XX class. So basically, if I wanted to change what is actually, say, a H2, or I can change a H5, and make it heading XX large, then I could do just that, and it remains a H5. So that's the purpose of the heading classes. Side note, HTML classes belong to the project, they can't be copied over like heading classes can. So if you copy a component into your project, it will match the HTML tag styling of that specific project. The same rule applies for all other HTML tags as well. Moving on, here you will see various text classes that you can use to style classes at a global level. Uh, rich text is used uh, down the bottom here for blogs. Um, now, I won't go into this in too much detail. It's best to check out the Webflow University to learn more about styling rich text. However, the good news is that we've optimized the rich text in this starter project. So it has all the right spacing and it will make your blogs look really nice. So this is another benefit of using this uh, starter project. Now, moving on to colors. With colors, we have color samples, background color, and text color. Now, color samples are used to create color swatches. Uh, background colors are used to create background color classes, and text colors are used to create text classes. Now, the good news is that Reloom helps you create color systems in seconds. To do this, you can visit the color palettes page in Reloom Library, and copy and paste the uh, color components into the project. So I'll show you how to do that. So let's say we want to establish some neutrals. I'll go ahead and I'll copy the gray color sample and I'll paste it in here. 
Now, as mentioned, the color sample is used to create the color swatch. So I can just click the space here and begin to create my swatch. So grade 25, I'll name it. Then I go here and I'll just keep adding until I have all the swatches in. Now, in terms of the background colors, I can go back to the uh, color palettes, click background colors, copy that in, or copy that and paste that into this space here. And as you'll see here, um, it has created background color classes. So if I were to use that on the section here, I could go ahead and do that. I would click the section and I would type in background color and already you see all the gray color classes loaded in and I can go ahead and I can choose uh, which shade I want this background to be. So that's what the background color classes are used for. Lastly, we have the text classes, which I can go back to the library, click text colors, copy gray in, and voila, I have text color classes, which I can use to style text. So uh, probably not a good example here, but I can go up to uh, this heading class and go text color gray 700 and it will make it gray. Moving on, we have effects which you can um, basically effects only features shadows which you can add to existing components. So there's shadow classes that you can add uh, and you can learn more about how to use shadow classes the client first way by following this tutorial. Uh, and then we have UI elements. Uh, so UI elements consists of buttons form classes and icons. So as you can see, there are a number of button classes you can style. Um, if you don't need four types of buttons, feel free to delete the tertiary class. So you might wanna just do that by you know going over here, deleting it, deleting it, and then making sure you clean up all CSS classes by just pressing remove. And that's how you can reduce the amount of tertiary classes. So you'd probably need to do that for all, all tertiary classes actually to, to make, to completely remove it. Um, so there are three variations of buttons. You have buttons, you have um, alternate, so on darker backgrounds, and then you have buttons with icons. Now, if you wish to add the tertiary buttons back in, you can go back to the Realum library and you can go and browse UI elements and click buttons. And here you have a list of all the buttons which you can copy and paste into a project. So I can go ahead, I can copy that uh, and paste that in. And there I have the tertiary button. Now, in terms of styling classes and things like buttons and text, once you change the style of a class and paste in a new component from the Reloom library, you will experience what's called class duplication. So Webflow duplicates classes that share the same name but have different styling. So because our components have the original styling applied, which you see here, uh, you will experience class duplication when pasting it in after you have styled the buttons. So this is normal and as of June 2022, we do not have a solution for this yet, but we're working hard to improve this experience. That's why currently the best practice as of today is to try and paste in all components before you begin styling. So what you wanna do is, before building the, the, the page, yeah, you just wanna paste in all the components you need, then you'll, need, then you'll wanna go to the style guide page and begin styling the buttons. This will save you lots of time. All right, so moving on, we have form elements uh, and then you have icons. Icons, essentially, I would not recommend editing the icon or image classes at all. Uh, it's best you use classes rather than changing like the styling. So if you do wanna increase the height, uh, the, you know, the size of an icon, use these classes. Uh, what's the difference between these two icon classes? Well, the first icon is just based off height 
and the second type of icon image is based on height and width so it keeps it in a square format now what's the difference between icons that are images and icons that are svgs well icons that are svgs or html embeds uh, enable you to control icon co color on hover so um, because it has uh, the fill that is basically has the script current color i've added this to to the fill um, what that does is if i do change the text color you will see that the icon color can change so that's the beauty of embeds um, and essentially um, to create an embed you can do that in Figma, uh, you can copy as an SVG in Figma and then paste in the embed here um, and also um, once you've done that you can change the field to current color. So that's how you use embeds. Now I tend to use embeds for uh, buttons and I'll use icon images for just general use of illustrations and icons on a website. As mentioned, I wouldn't recommend editing the size of these. Um, if you do wish to create a custom size because maybe we don't cover it here, so an example would be 20 pixels, um, you can use the icon custom class. So this is where you can create a custom size. Um, you know, if it's 20 pixels, it would be 1.1, uh, 125 rem and also quick tip to figure out rams you can just go 20 pixels divided by 16 ram and it will automate that for you so i actually got that wrong so sometimes it's best to do it that way thanks for watching this video if you found it useful and you would like to continue to improve your design and development workflow on webflow make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel now, if you would like to see more videos like this, you can visit the Reloom University on our website. And if you would like to join a community of designers and developers using Webflow, you can join our Slack channel, it's free, and you can find it on our website in the footer and also on our socials. Thanks for watching this video and enjoy building.